Hey guys, welcome to another Electronics and More video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can easily add an electrical receptacle to the outside of your home. The method I'm about to show you will work fine on a concrete block home as well as wood frame home. I'm going to be adding the receptacle right over there on that concrete block wall. To get started, you're going to have to look for a receptacle on the other side of the wall, which is close by to where you're looking to have the new receptacle installed. Let's get started. Okay, this is the electrical receptacle located on the other side of the wall underneath that window. I'm going to turn off the power to this receptacle and then remove this cover. In this case here, this was painted over, so I'm going to have to take a utility knife, cut around all the edges, before removing the cover. Okay, the cover has been removed from the receptacle. You could take a meter, a digital meter like this, a cheap one. You could use a bar meter. Go between each sides of the screws. One there, one there. You should see nothing on a 200 volt AC setting. Leave the probe here. Also go to ground. Do the same on the opposite side. And you should have zero volts. Once you confirm there's no voltage, then you can remove the receptacle. Make sure the electrical receptacle that you choose has power all the time. One half can have power all the time. One could be switch controlled, but if the entire receptacle is switch controlled, you cannot use it to install a receptacle outside. Over here, you can see two silver screws. That's the neutral from the panel. There's no voltage applied to these screws. The neutral screws are connected to the longer blade of the receptacle. The shorter blade is connected to the black wires, the hot wires which carry 120 volts AC. Some receptacles, this little tab you see right here, may be bent off and removed. The reason why they do that is to separate the lower part of the receptacle from the upper. Usually that's done when the receptacle is switch controlled. So if you have a receptacle that the top works all the time and the bottom works by switch, you're going to see this tab has been removed. In order to drill through the wall, we're going to push this out of the way. I'm going to take off the ground wire, which is connected to the metal work box. Now I'm going to show you closer up the inside of the box so you know what to do next. When you look inside this box, you're going to see it was secured directly to the concrete block. You may have a poured wall. It could be just a cinder block wall. What you're going to have to do is remove this plug in the center. You can do that using a screwdriver, a slot screwdriver. Reach in, pry it like that. Grab it with the lineman's pliers or any other pliers. Twist it and remove it. You can see all this leftover plaster that's been in here since the 60s. We're going to clean that out. We don't need that in there. Now if you have a hole directly behind this knockout, that means you're inside the hollow core of the concrete block. You're going to center the drill bit in the middle of that opening and push all the way to the opposite side of the wall, which is outside, and you're going to drill all the way through. In my case, I want to position the drill bit right in the center of this hole because I'm not going to be placing a bushing because the wire is going to be centered in such a way that it cannot rub against that sharp edge. So I'm going to drill right now in the center of this. I'm going to be using a half inch carbide masonry bit to drill straight through the wall. Now using a hammer drill is much easier when drilling through concrete. I am helping a friend of mine out at his house. So I'm going to be using a half inch regular drill. It's not going to be a hammer drill. It will still work fine, but it will take just a little bit longer to get through the wall. One more thing to note, before drilling through the wall, make sure there's no plumbing nearby. You do not want to drill into a drain pipe or a water line. Most commonly you may run into that near a kitchen sink or by a bathroom if you're drilling through the wall. And here we go. Centered. Let me get it going first. That looks good.
when you're drilling through the wall, make sure that the hole comes out at least a foot above the ground. National Electrical Code likes to have outside receptacles at least one foot above the ground. So if your receptacle inside is low, make sure you angle the drill bit up to make the outside receptacle higher. As you can see, we just went into the hollow core of the concrete block. Keep the drill level. Go straight through till you feel the other side, which is right there, and then continue to drill. And I'm all the way through. If you're working on a wood frame wall, it's going to be very easy. You're going to take out the knockout. It's going to be a hollow space in that 2x6 wall. And you'll be able to put a knockout bushing right here. Directly inside that half inch knockout. To secure the wire that we're going to be pulling through. The next step, I'm going to clean a little bit here. And then I'm going to be pulling through a wire through the concrete block. Now when you're pulling wire through concrete block walls like this, you're going to be using Romex wire, which is underground feeder. It's a heavier jacketed wire. It's designed for direct burial into the ground. And that's exactly what you want to use inside the wall. Now this is a 15 amp circuit with this receptacle, which means 14 gauge wires being used. If you have a 20 amp line connected to this receptacle, you're going to use 12 gauge wire. You could use 12 gauge wire for either 15 or 20 amp circuits. So I'm going to be using 12 gauge underground feeder wire. I'm going to pull it through the wall right now. And right here is what that wire looks like. See the gray coating, very thick. Now before installing this, I'm going to vacuum this area, make it nice and clean. Now before sliding the wire inside the wall, it's going to be easier if you take a utility knife and you strip back the insulation to expose about 4 inches of the conductors, the black, the white, and the ground. Alright, you can now see it's been stripped. The next step, strip away about a half of an inch of the insulation from the end of the white wire and the black wire. Now that the ends are stripped, Take the other end, slide it through the wall until it goes completely out the other side. There it goes. And leave it right around there. Now the way this is wired, all of the electrical metallic tubing and this metal box is already grounded because it's connected to the service panel or the breaker panel. You see there's no ground wires in this box, but up here there's a ground wire which goes between the metal box and the plaster ring. The National Electrical Code wants you to have this even though just screwing this in is actually going to ground the receptacle. It's just an extra thing to make sure that nothing becomes disconnected on the ground side. So we're going to take the ground wire here and we're going to twist it together with this ground wire here. Then we're going to fold it over once it's twisted and tuck it up and off to the side. This goes in about an inch, inch and a quarter. If your electrical box has a space behind it, if you're working on a wood frame wall or a hollow core of a concrete block, you can take this ground wire, cut it shorter, place a little loop in it, then you can drill a hole in the back of the electrical box, slightly smaller than the threads of a self-tapping ground screw. You can then secure the wire to the back of the box. 
Now you're going to notice that on my receptacle, I have power coming in and power going out to another receptacle. If you only have power coming in, that means you're only using one set of screws on both sides. You would take the wires here, put a little loop in them, clockwise the loop. You want the loop to go clockwise, so as you tighten the screw, the loop becomes tighter. You would take the extra screw that's not being used, connect the white to that side over here, and then you would take the black and connect it to this side of the receptacle. Now because both of these are being used, and there's no way to backwire this receptacle, there's no backwire option with little holes to insert the wire into, we're going to remove one of the wires and then we're going to twist it together with the wires going through the wall and then add a little pigtail to reconnect back to the receptacle. Okay, you can see one set of wires which is going into the conduit at the top over here to the next receptacle was removed from the receptacle on the bottom screw on both sides. Take this white wire now, make it straight. We're going to twist the two together along with the pigtail wire. Let me do that and show you what it looks like before I connect it. Here you can see the wires are all nice and straight. They're stripped about the same amount, a little over a half of an inch, maybe five eighths. Over here is the wire that's going to be used to tie into the existing wires to run over to the receptacle. These wires move them to the side. Take the black wires. Hold them all to the same length. Take lineman's pliers and you're going to twist them all together. Not easy with the camera right in front of me, unfortunately. But let me try this here. Twist them all nice together, nice and tight. Okay. Once they're twisted together, you're going to take a red cap. Now, if you're using 14 gauge wire and you have three 14 gauge wires, then you can get by using a yellow cap. But if you're using three 12 gauge wires, you want to use a red. Twist it on nice and tight. All the way down until you can't tighten it anymore. Okay, so now this one right here is ready to go. Push this off to the side. Do the same with the white. All right, both of these are ready to go, the neutral and the hot. The next thing I'm going to do is pull this wire forward a little bit more because you want to make sure that thick jacket is at least a half to three quarters of an inch past the hole. You don't want it in there, so the wires will end up rubbing that way. Pull it forward, and then at the end we're going to bend it up so that jacket curves around the concrete facing up. We're going to take this ground wire, we're going to tie it onto this ground wire, wrap the two together, and on this end we're going to make a loop which is going to be connected to the ground screw on the receptacle. Okay, you can see all the wires are now ready to go. I have a loop there, a loop on the neutral, the ground wires twisted together. I'm going to push this connection up to the upper right hand corner and this loop here will go on the bottom of the receptacle. Just be very careful that the ground wire here, make sure it's pushed in to the right. You don't want to have it anywhere near the hot terminals. If you do, it could always short out. Let me connect it up, put it all back in, and then we're going to go on to the next step. Okay, push it forward. Everything goes in nicely. Okay, let's put the cover plate back on, and then we're going to go outside and finish the job. Okay. okay, let's go out. Okay, the wire's through the wall. There's a couple of ways that you can put the box on the wall to hold the GFI receptacle. The first way, you would take a metal box 
and you can trace it right over the center of this wire going through the center knockout in the back of the electrical box. You could take a larger drill bit, drill in about an inch and a half all the way around a series of holes and then using a chisel you could chip out the area and tap con the metal box. By doing that the receptacle will end up flush with the wall when the waterproof covers in place. An easier way of doing it would be to use a waterproof box like you see right here. This is a three hole half inch exterior box. You can see there's a hole in the bottom there, hole in the bottom there, and one in the middle. You're going to slide this directly over the wire like that. Keep it centered exactly in the middle. To secure the box to the wall, what you're going to do, here's a couple of indentations, one here and one in this area up here. Take a 3 16 inch drill bit, drill out these two areas because what you're going to do is you're going to take a Tapcon, two of them, and use these to secure it to the wall. You're going to use a 5 32nd inch bit. This is sold for Tapcons. Let me place the box in position and then go to the next step. Okay, as you can see, I drilled out the weatherproof box. This location here, as well as here. There's the ground screw before it connects to the GFI. You're going to wrap the copper wire around the ground screw to ground the metal box. I'm now going to take the tap cons, place them through this hole, and screw them into the holes that were drilled into the concrete wall. Make sure when you drill yours that the wire comes out exactly in the center of this opening. Okay, the box is screwed into the wall with the two tap cons. Cable coming through right smack in the center. The next step, I'm going to strip this wire. Make sure you leave the insulation about a half of an inch past this ring so you have the protection. It won't rub against this edge and cut into anything as long as you leave that thick jacket. Then you're going to expose about four inches of the wires and then strip off the very ends of the hot and neutral, which is the white and the black wires. Take off about a half of an inch to five eighths on both. Okay, the wires are trimmed to the proper length. The ends have been stripped. We're going to take this ground wire, pull it around the screw, and secure it tightly. The end of this is going to have a loop, as well as these two ends to go onto the GFI receptacle. Right here is the GFI receptacle. Now, with the GFI receptacle, you can leave the end straight, because the way it's designed, you can slide the wire in behind the screw here, and the plate under the screw will squash the wire between the top plate and the inner plate. GFIs are required for all receptacles outdoors, in your garage, within six feet of a kitchen sink or a bathtub. If you would like to learn more about GFIs, how they work, I have a great video. You can check it out. The link is in the video description area. Or you can click on the I right over here with the circle to pull up that video. Let me connect this up and then show you the next step. Now when you're going to wire the GFI, you're going to notice this yellow tag along the bottom and it's going over a section that says load. This one on top is the line, these two screws that have no tape over it, and that's where you're going to connect the AC power supply, 120 volts, to those screws. When the power is connected to the two screws, the receptacle will be able to operate properly. If you would like to connect to another circuit, after the GFI to have this GFI protect additional receptacles then you're going to remove this tape and connect those receptacles the line and the load the black and the white to the lower set of screws I'm going to take the white connect it to the opposite side here take the black connect it here and then push it back in the GFI is now installed you can see with this particular cover this weatherproof cover that I'm going to be using this one you have to have the screws partially sticking out to slide them over these oblong holes right here like that and push it over before you tighten the screws. The cover is very deep because we're going to have two plugs in here all the time for some low voltage lighting. The wires will be coming out and we'll have this weatherproof cover protecting the GFI from getting wet. Okay, the receptacle is now complete with the weatherproof cover. Keep in mind, if you do not want to use a deep cover like this, if you're not going to be leaving something plugged in 
all the time. You can use a thin exterior waterproof cover, one that you only open when you're going to use it to plug in an extension cord, to trim hedges, or plug in some lights. The final step, you're going to take clear silicone and you're going to apply a bead all around the edges of the box to seal the box to the wall. You don't want any water finding its way into this box or into the hole where the wire has been run through. And you also may want to take some clear silicone and apply it to the very top plug of the electrical box to prevent water from finding its way around that plug through the threads into the box. Over here you can see how nice it looks with the silicone applied and all smoothed out. Once the power is turned on, you should be able to push this button here. It says reset and it should click just like that. You're now good to go. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.